All right, Leanne, are you ready? Yes. Hello, everyone. Thank you for joining us this evening. Okay, so we will begin uh, telling you a little bit about Morocco. Um, so as Cindy said, I'm um, Leanne House General Manager, and I will facilitate the presentation this evening. Um, and like Cindy said, Cindy and Tammy will both uh, tell you a little bit more about Morocco. So our future presentations, we have um, three more coming up to round out the year. And next week will be Antarctica on November 15th. The week after will be Alaska and the Yukon and Coral will be joining us to talk a little bit more about Alaska and the Yukon and the three ways to see, um, see that. And uh, then on November 29th, we will discuss Iceland, which is uh, one of my favorite places. So I'm really excited to tell everyone about that. So if you would like to receive uh, future presentations as well as timely information about our tours um, and new tours, we recommend that you follow us on Facebook and sign up to receive our email newsletter. Uh, and with emails, you can subscribe, unsubscribe at any time. And we just, uh, you know, send out emails once a month to give you a little bit more information on what's happening with Westworld and Women Explorers. And uh, so right now I will launch a poll and uh, we can see whether you would like to sign up for our email newsletter. And I'll just launch that now. So you can sign up for our Women Explorers and Westworld Tours um, or just one or the other. Or if you're already receiving it, you can let us know that as well. And if you're joining us on Facebook, you can send us a message uh, with your email address if you'd like to sign up or you can visit westworldtours.com slash subscribe and you can get um, signed up that way as well. Okay, perfect. Thank you everyone for filling that out. Okay. So um, we'll just talk a little bit about um, our preview for next week. And uh, that's Antarctica with the Falkland Islands and Brazil and Argentina. Uh, I'm really excited about this one. I'm actually going on this trip um, in about a month. So I would be happy to chat with anybody when I return about um, any specific questions you have, or if there's any questions that you have um, ahead of time, I would be happy to report back. Uh, but this trip, we venture down to the Southern Hemisphere on our Antarctic um, and Falcon Islands cruise. So you will fly into Rio de Janeiro, you'll explore Rio and Sugarloaf and Christ the Redeemer and all those good things. Uh, you'll stay right on Copacabana Beach. And from there, we will travel to Iguazu Falls, where you will get to see the falls from both sides. And then we will travel down to uh, Buenos Aires, where you will have a few days to explore before you fly down to Ushuaia, which is where you will get on your expedition cruise. Uh, you'll cross the Drake Passage, and as you can see on the map here, you'll you'll cross the Drake. Um, you'll go on to the Antarctic Peninsula, where you'll have a few landings, uh, several days of landings, ice cruising, all that kind of fun stuff. Sea penguins, whales, all all those um, exciting snow-capped icebergs and mountains. And then we'll travel to the Falkland Islands, where you'll have three days of exploring the penguins and the communities there. So um, we're really looking forward to sharing a little bit more about this tour with you. And so tune in next week. And if you have any questions, you can send us an email um, at inquiries at westworldtours.com or you can send us a message uh, in the Q&A box here. Um, and so speaking of questions, we do encourage you to ask questions throughout the presentation and um, everyone has been muted, so you won't be able to speak, but we do um, check the Q&A box as well as the chat. So feel free to answer or ask any questions in the chat box and uh, we will get back to you at the end of the presentation or throughout. And uh, if you've joined us from Facebook, you won't be able to see the Q&A box or the chat box, but you can leave your comments and questions in the comment section on Facebook, and we will be sure to check there and get back to you with those answers to your questions. So a little bit about Women Explorers. It's a division of Westworld Tours, which is one of Western Canada's premier tour 
companies that has been serving Canadians from coast to coast uh, with escorted travel throughout North America and around the world for over 20 years. And like I said um, about our next week presentation, that will be our seventh continent. So we're really excited uh, about visiting all, having tours on all seven continents. But on each one of our tours, you'll experience all the great sites, attractions and activities that are important to you. Uh, trusting that all the quality components of a successful trip are there, including your excellent accommodations, modern comfortable coaches, um, your professional tour directors, experienced drivers, and baggage handling and several meals throughout the tour. And Women Explorers is all about enriching the lives of women, uh, exposing them to new experiences through travel and friendship, creating a fun and casual environment to connect as you explore the world with women of all ages and backgrounds. Our small groups, uh, which Cindy will talk a little bit later, but our Women Explorers are much smaller groups deliver a highly personalized and rewarding travel experience with a group of like-minded women to share in those experiences. And uh, having experienced it for yourself, um, traveling with and getting to know other women with a common interest is just as rewarding as the trip itself. So we invite you to um, explore the mystery, history, culture, nature, and adventure with us as we travel the globe. And we know great friendships will be formed and if you tuned in, uh, I guess that was a couple weeks ago with our Ireland trip, you'll hear or you would have heard uh, some of the ladies that joined our tour, our Women Explorers Ireland tour last year, just talk about the amazing experience they had traveling, you know, with other women that they had never met before and how friendships have formed through that. So now uh, Westworld Tours has partnered with Trees for Travel and we plant two trees on your behalf to help compensate for some of the carbon emissions that are produced by your trip. And so the trees are one of the most powerful absorbers of carbon emissions. And when you travel with us, you are contributing to restoration of the ecosystems, um, biodiversity and supporting local communities. You can find uh, our forest if you visit our website and you'll be able to see all the trees we've planted so far and where they're being planted. So check that out for more information. And now uh, on to the main presentation, our Morocco Women Explorers Morocco Tour, which is departing April 22nd to May 5th of 2024. So a country of dazzling diversity, explore mysterious and mesmerizing Morocco with its epic mountains, um, sweeping deserts and ancient cities an ancient land where intoxicating sights, colors, and aromas entice the senses and uh, serving up warm hospitality and the perfect glass of mint tea. Wind your way through the famous and colorful century-old souks in Fez and UNESCO-recognized Marrakesh Medina. Explore the cap captivating labyrinths within um, the ancient walled casbahs, journey into the mountains and see Morocco's magical blue city and embark on an ex uh, epic expedition across the desert dunes, spending a night under the stars in the Berber desert camp. Morocco is sure to steal your heart. And with that, I am happy to introduce you uh, once again to Cindy Erickson, Senior Tour Coordinator with Westworld Tours. Cindy's passion for travel has taken her to many desti destinations throughout the globe, bringing a wealth of knowledge and experience to her role as a tour coordinator. So welcome, Cindy. Well, thank you, Leanne, and welcome to everyone. Thank you so much for joining us. I am uh, really excited to share with you our Women Explorers tour to Morocco. I know Morocco um, has been one of my um, most cultural destinations to visit that I, I found was a very uh, cultural experience and it was a wonderful experience. And um, I think everybody should have an opportunity to visit Morocco. And uh, anyway, I would like to carry on here and let you know a little bit more about our tour. Um, here you can tell uh, we've listed on this uh, slide some of the highlights of this tour, which is includes 12 nights hotel accommodation. Um, you'll have a four night stay in Fez, there's multi-night stays in Marrakesh and the Bomaldi Dates. Uh, we'll have English-speaking guides with us throughout. 
deluxe motor coach transportation. All your baggage handling is um, included as well. And as I said, it's uh, a total of 14 days, uh, one country and up to, I believe 35 meals are included on this particular journey. And as you can see, we've included all the attractions here. Everything listed here is actually included in your tour price. We've got the camel rides in the Sahara at sunset. Um, we will have lunch at a women's cooperative in Marrakesh. Um, we'll visit the Valley of Roses. We'll tour the museums, the Casbahs. Um, very encompassing um, tour for sure. You know, I do think I missed a slide here, which is, there we go. Um, sorry, an overview of the actual tour and the route that we'll be traveling. I really like to have a visual of uh, the places that I'll be going. And uh, this will give you a good idea. On this tour, you're going to start in Casablanca. So you will fly into Casablanca. Then we will travel through um, Rabat up to the northern part of Morocco to Chef Shawan, um, and then traveling south and then um, over to their food and the Merzouga dunes, coming back down, um, traveling south and back to the coast um, and into Marrakesh and flying home from there. So that kind of shows you the route that we will be traveling and highlights some of the uh, cities and spots that we will be staying in. So first of all, day one is welcome to Casablanca, Morocco, which is located on the Atlantic coast of Morocco in the Western part of the country. Um, Casablanca is a cosmopolitan city that represents the modern face of Morocco, offering a really unique blend of traditional and contemporary influences. So after you've um, cleared customs and immigration, you're going to be met um, by your guide and driver outside of the airport and you're going to be transferred to your hotel. Um, after you've checked in and time permitting, depending on what time your flight will arrive, we are definitely hoping that it will be early enough that we can head out and do an overview of this modern city, which is a, a, an a must visit site in Casablanca is the ha Hassan II Mosque, which is considered the fifth largest in the world. It's known for its intricate details and beautiful tile work. And uh, the top image there on your right is a, a shot of the mosque in Casablanca, as well as um, the other images that you're seeing. Two on the left-hand side are taken inside. And then uh, the other one is kind of an aerial view of the mosque and kind of overlooking the city. The mosque actually is covers land and water. So it's built over the water and the land. It's, um, it's like I said, known for its intricate details and beautiful tile work. It's uh, grandeur, beauty and unique fe features make it a remarkable monument that reflects Mar Morocco's cultural and historical richness. Um, some interesting facts about the mosque, the minaret or the tower is the world's second tallest um, at a height of nearly 700 feet. Um, it really does dominate the skyline of Casablanca, as you can see clearly. It features um, intricate patterns of blue and green, blue-green tiles, which play beautifully against the whiteness of the stone. Uh, the uppermost portion of the soaring minarets are particularly grand. And there is a laser light which focuses a beam in the direction of Mecca. It was commissioned by King Hassan II in 1986 and in hopes that the mosque would be completed in three years for his 60th birthday celebration. Um, it actually took seven years to complete. And they say that 2,500 people or more worked seven days a week in shifts around the clock to complete it. So they estimate that 10,000 plus people labored for more than 80 million hours to finish it. It has a retractable roof, which covers approximately 220,000 square feet in the prayer hall. 
um, which can be opened in a matter of five minutes, which I think is absolutely amazing. Um, a large portion of the financing to build the mosque came from donations of the Moroccan people. Um, and it really is a symbol of pride for the Moroccan people. And all the natural elements used in the design of the mosque, like the granite, the plaster, the wood, and the marble, were all sourced from Morocco itself. It's so huge that it can accommodate 25,000 people inside while another 80,000 can be accommodated in the courtyards. Be quite the sight to see. Um, Tammy, on your stop in Casablanca, I'm sure you caught an image of the Hassan II Mosque when you were there. Yes, we did, Cindy. It was, it was stunning. It's Absolutely huge. stunning. Yes. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So following our city tour, um, we will depart for a nostalgic evening and welcome dinner at the mythical saloon from the movie classic Casablanca, starring, of course, Ingrid Bergman and Humphrey Bogart. Um, truly, um, Rick's Cafe does live on. You'll find that the restaurant is filled with architectural and decorative details reminiscent of the film. Pardon me, you'll find curved arches, a sculpted bar, balconies, balustrades, as well as dramatic beaded and stenciled brass lighting that casts incredible shadows and lights um, through uh, the room on bouncing off the white walls. Rick's Cafe is located in an old courtyard mansion, which was built against the walls of the old Medina and Casablanca. Um, the lighting and shadows on the, on the front balcony uh, the entrance through the heavy door and glass doors with palms on each side. The greeting of the tuxedo doorman make you feel like you've stepped onto the movie set. Great attention to detail was taken to recreate the new Ricks. Um, even the inland inlaid floor matches the one from the movie. And you might begin to think that maybe it really was here in 1942. As in the movie, um, the music is a major part of the evening at Rick's, and uh, as you might su uh, suspect, as time goes by, is a frequent request to the in-house pianist, and you'll just have to say, play it again, Sam. So that's where we're going to be having our welcome dinner on this particular tour. Fascinating place. Then on our first full day in Morocco, we're going to depart Casablanca and travel to Rabat. And you will notice the landscape change um, from sand colored vistas to a softer, greener landscape in Rabat, with immaculate streets lined with palm trees and deep pink flowering oleander bushes. Rabat um, means um, fortified place. So, in, and it is one of Morocco's four imperial cities. There's Marrakesh, Fez, Meknes, and Rabat. Rabat is the capital of Morocco and dates back to the 12th century. It's located on Morocco's northern coast facing the Atlantic Ocean. And the city of Rabat was deemed a UNESCO World Heritage Site in 2012. It is an intriguing mix of the region's past glories and modern marvels. With a 17th century walled Medina, during our tour of this impressive city, you're going to see the Palais Royal, uh, which is the official resident of the king, and the Mohammed V Mausoleum. Um, that's a picture on the left side of your screen with its smartly uniformed Moroccan Royal Guards standing on duty with their magnificent white horses. Then you're going to visit the Hassan Tower, which you can see on the bottom right image of your screen there. It's located just behind the mausoleum. The Hassan Tower is considered um, as the symbol of Rabat. It is one of the most famous sites of the kingdom. It was constructed in the 12th century, and it is a grand reminder of a mosque that was never completed. And then after the tour, um, of Rabat, we will depart and we are going to head to the beautiful city of Chef Shawan. And that is known as the Blue City. 
And after checking into our Riyadh, you will have some time to freshen up before we join together with our fellow travelers for a relaxing dinner in this beautiful um, city of blue. Now, the images on your screen here are of the Riyadh, um, the bottom right, um, one of the typical rooms in the Riyadh where we will be staying. And on the left is um, the lobby area of that particular hotel. It does have a, a full service spa, beautiful pool. And the middle image there is actually a, a picture that was taken through the windows of one of the rooms at the hotel, looking out over um, the blue city of Chef Shawan. While we're in Chef Shawan, we're going to um, do a lot of touring around on day three. We'll have breakfast at the hotel, and then we're going to um, tour the city of Chef Shawan, which is situated in the Rift Mountains, just inland from Tangiers. Uh, the town was founded in 1492 by Moorish exiles from Spain. Um, one distinction possessed by Chef Shawan is it's obviously blue rinsed houses and buildings, a tradition that comes from the town's former Jewish population. During the tour of this blue and white village, we'll, it, we'll see the Palace al Maknez, which is a, a shot, um, I'm sorry, not palace, the place, the square, um, in the top middle of your screen there, and the famous square of Ut al Haman, which is in the bottom middle. Um, you can see that there with a tall cedar standing in the center of the square that overlooks the shops, bars, and restaurants. This is the most common place for visitors and locals to stop, to enjoy the scenery, um, have a rest, to have some tea, or get a bite to eat. Uh, from, the, from this location, you can see the minaret of the Great Mosque with its exposed bricks. Um, as we tour through the blue maze of the Medina, which you can see on the left and right images are just some shots of the old Medina in Chef Shawan. It's beautiful. Um, some of the most charming little places are along the narrow streets just off the main avenue. And if you love photography, you'll find new material around every corner and every few steps. Um, such as an ancient door or a picturesque scene of a, at a public um, address. You can um, wander around the blue streets. They are absolutely amazing. And um, a little tip, as you're wandering through the Medina in Chef Chuan, if the floors are painted blue, uh, that means it isn't actually a dead end. And some of the most lovely pictures um, and gems can be found at the end of a dead end. After the tour of Chef Shawan, we're gonna depart for the medieval city of Fez, which is located again, a little further north in Morocco in the foothills of the middle Atlas mountains. And what, that's going to be your home for the next four nights. Uh, Fez is one of Morocco's most historic and culturally significant cities, often referred to as the Athens of Africa, due to its rich history and contributions to art, culture, and education. Founded in the 8th century, it has been a center for learning and trade for centuries. Fez is also well known for its traditional crafts, including intricate mosaic tile work, handwoven textiles, leather goods, and pottery. Um, the pictures you see here are actually pictures of the Riyadh that we will be staying in for the four nights while we are in um, Fez. And you're, with your local guide, we're gonna head out to explore Fez on a full day tour. Uh, Fez is the religious capital of Morocco. Um, we'll tour the Medina, visit the Madrasa Adarine, which is the center of learning, a historic marvel within the medieval Medina. Built in the 14th century, it stands at the entrance of a spice and perfume market in the spiritual center of Fez. The highlight of the small Madrasa is its courtyard, its floors and walls exquisitely decorated in the traditional patterns of Moroccan craftsmanship 
as you can see on the images here on your screen, um, the tile work and the carving is um, unbelievable. The sultans uh, which ruled Morocco from the 13th to the 15th century were known as passionate patrons of madrasas, which are the centers of learning. And the al al Turin Madrasa was built between 1323 and 1325. Um, and the name means the Madrasa of the Perfumers, um, which obviously it takes its name from the location at the Madru at, in the Medina um, at the entrance to the historic spice and perfume market. But unlike the busy souks that it borders, um, the al Aturin Madrasa is a place of unusual calm. Another stop on the tour will be the uh, Nayurans Museum, which is a wonderfully restored um, fundak, which is an ancient inn used by traveling merchants who stored and sold their goods below and took lodgings in the floors above. Centered on a courtyard, the rooms are given over to displays of traditional craftsman tools, chunky prayer beads, Berber locks, chests, and musical instruments. Everything is beautifully presented, um, although the stunning building um, gives the exhibits a run for its money, for sure. The building is absolutely stunning. It's an image is there on the courtyard on the top left of your screen of the museum. After lunch on day four, you'll explore the Medina, which is an uh, pardon me, at UNESCO World Heritage Site. Exploring the Medina is like stepping back in time. The winding streets and historic architecture provide a glimpse into the city's rich history and heritage. They are a vibrant and essential part of the city's cultural and economic life. Um, spread throughout the narrow meandering streets, they cover a vast area and offer a wide variety of goods and services. This is where artisans and craftspeople showcase their skills. You can witness the creation of intricate textiles, delicate ceramics, and fine leather goods. And it also um, provides great shopping opportunities, you know, including rugs, carpets, traditional clothing, pottery, spices, herbs, leather bags, lamps, and you name it, you can find it. Um, Bargaining, of course, is common in the souks, and it is expected that you negotiate price with the sellers. So, Tammy, I know that um, you maybe had a chance to visit the souks when you were in uh, Fez. Do you want to tell right. us about your um, experience there? Sure. It was amazing. It was just to experience all the, the hub going on and everything in there. Um, the vendors are quite aggressive, as you would imagine, there in you know, it's like going to Mexico, right? They're they're on you. Uh, you just have to be very firm with them and just tell them no. Yeah. If they hear if they hear the word no, thank you, they that encourages them to keep on trying to sell you. Um, our guide told us just tell them no, very firmly no. Um, there's great deals to be had there. I even bought home a, a tagine. That's ah. the, the broccoli cooking dishes. I packed mm -hmm. it very carefully in my suitcase amongst a bunch of clothes, and it made it home safely. So yeah, but there's uh, the stuff you can buy there is just incredible. The the clothes and the the silks and the scarves and the you name it, they have it. It's they have everything. Yeah. The baskets, the the oh, like you said, the leather goods, the ceramics, the yes, the, the colors, the smells, the yeah. vibrancy and the energy just um yes. in the souks itself is is an amazing experience. It, I it know for myself experience. it was uh a wonderful experience going through the souks. And yes, as Canadians, we're very polite and, you know, we'll just say, no, thank you. But you're right. They are aggressive and you do have to be firm and just yeah. give them a good no and, and keep right. walking. Yeah. Don't yes. make eye contact unless you're interested. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah. Thanks, Tammy. Yes. Um, later in the afternoon, we will also include photo opportunities at the imposing gate of Bab Bujlaud, um, also known as the Blue Gate of Fez. 
which was actually built by the French colonial administration in 1913 to serve as the grand entrance to the old city. Um, as you enter the Medina through the gate, you will notice how the color of the mosaics change. Uh, the blue on the sun that greets new visitors is covered um, with the elegant cobalt blue designs, which is the color of Fez. Pardon me, the reverse side, which faces the Medina, um, is detailed in green. As you can see on your on the screen here, the blue welcomes and the green is on the inside of the Medina and green is the color for Islam. Uh, we'll visit the, the, pardon me, the splendid fountain at Place um, Najirin, the ancient ramparts and the beautiful facade of the Royal Palace, which you can see on the bottom right, which is the official residence of the King of Morocco. Although we can't go inside, it is well worth the visit to view the intricate details of the seven golden doors and the impressive tile work surrounding them. And you can see on the top right, there is um, one of the fountains in the square by the museum. Um, on the bottom right, as I mentioned, is the seven doors of the Royal Palace. And on the left is um, some of the old ramparts that that um, you we will see as well. And Tammy, do you have any other shop thoughts that you would like to share with us about your trip to Fez and, and um, I'll just, it, so many people worry about traveling to countries that far away. Um, really, you're with your tour guide, you're with a whole bunch of people. When you're, when you're on a group tour, everybody looks out for one another. And it's a whole camaraderie. You're a, t you're a team and that. You never have to be worried about, you know, it's, you just, you'd be safe. Do the same things you would do here at home and that. And I, I, I never once did I feel unsafe anywhere that I traveled there. And I did, I did a group tour myself. Yeah. 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 Definitely traveling in a group is um, the way to go, especially in a country um, maybe like Morocco, where it's a little bit more exotic. Um, you know, there's uh, the culture is completely different than what we have here at home, which makes a visit to Morocco um a great experience because you are totally experiencing, not only experiencing, you're seeing, you're tasting, um, you're able to feel it, it. It's a totally different culture and traveling with a group really is a great idea to a, to a destination like Morocco. And uh, our groups are small, women explorers. Uh, we have a maximum of 20 um, guests on any one of our women explorer tours. That is the maximum number we will take. On average, we're about 15, 16 passengers. So it's a nice small group and it really does give you an opportunity to, to um, meet new people. It's a more personal experience, uh, a more intimate experience. And you can do a lot more with a group of, a small group of people than you can with a large group of people, which is what you will um, experience when you're on a Women Explorers tour. So good point, Tammy, thank you. Day five is a fantastic full day trip uh, from Mez out to Meknes and vol Volubilis. I have trouble with that when my tongue wants to get all twisted up. Um, Meknes is the third imperial city you will see. Um, you'll see the old city ramparts, which you can see on the top left. You'll visit the magnificent gateway of Bab el Masur, which is the bottom middle um, image, the gate there you can see. And the up close image of the detail work um, is in the right above it in the middle there. Uh, it really is, I mean, the detail, the mosaic tile is just, and the carvings, the work and the detail that went into them, it, it, it's amazing. Um, actually, this is like the main gate uh, between Meknes's Medina and the Imperial City Districts. So, um, it's enormous and highly picturesque edifice, perhaps the grandest of all imperial Moroccan gateways. It is well preserved and one of North Africa's best examples with intricate, as I said, mosaic tile work 
and inscriptions across the top. Um, we'll also visit the Sultan's Royal Stables, Granaries, and the House of Water, um, built to house the the um, to built to house water and feed the twelve thousand of the Sultan's horses. Top to the top and bottom uh, right images. There are some of the pictures uh, from the um, the stables and the granaries um, in in uh, the Sultan's royal stables. Um, it was also said that each horse, each of the twelve thousand horses that he had in his stable, were assigned two men to care for them. The place is massive. It's it, it, the enormity is um, very hard to describe over pictures and and um, words. You really have to be there to to experience the the enormity of the place. After lunch, then we're going to depart Macbeth and we're going to head to Volubilis, uh, which is declared an UNESCO World Heritage Site in 1997. The Roman city of Volubilis dates to the 3rd century BC and was an important outpost of the Roman Empire. Um, it's the first destination, it's the perfect destination, I should say, for history, scenery, and culture. And it, it's an impressive site um, with extensive Roman ruins. You'll view the gorgeous tiles that have been restored to their original condition. Um, you can see an image of one there on the top right-hand side of your screen. The mosaic tile work that was found or uncovered, I should say, not found, uncovered during excavations of the site. Um, and there's numerous um, mosaic floors that were uncovered. Uh, they're absolutely stunning and it, incredible, incredible intricate work. So they have been, many of them have been restored as they've been uncovered and uh, they were restored to their original condition. So we'll make a quick stop at the visitor center before actually entering the site. And just beyond the entrance gate lies a small on-site museum, which displays the ancient city's most um, celebrated finds and includes some of their prized discoveries. Um, many of the artifacts uncovered are now housed in the archeology span museum in Rabat. Um, and there's still so much to uncover here. It's currently only half of the 40 acre site has been excavated. So after having some time to explore this amazing site, um, we'll head back to Fez for our evening. On day six is going to be a fun day. Uh, Moroccan cuisine is one of the most fascinating in the world and Fez is the capital of Moroccan cooking, Moroccan cooking, I should say. And today is an exciting and savory day, preparing Moroccan dishes during a private cooking class. So those tagines, like the one that you purchased, uh, Tammy, I'm sure will be utilized on this day for sure. So we'll be preparing Moroccan dishes um, during, like I said, a private cooking class. And it's a this really is a journey with a difference, a cultural exchange that goes well beyond um, just a list of ingredients or visits to the tourist sites. This is where you really get to um, immerse yourself and get hands on in your Moroccan experience. You'll start by journeying through the, sou the souks um, with your chef. And then after you've done that, you'll, you'll go with your list of ingredients and you'll come back and you will start, um, like I said, lift the lid off an earthenware cuisine and dive under the surface of this fascinating country by plunging into the soups with your chef as your guide. Uh, then enjoy an authentic cooking experience, preparing a traditional appetizer, a main dish and dessert. Then after you get to enjoy it. And then we'll return to our hotel uh, mid-afternoon. And the remainder of that day is um, yours to spend at your leisure. So um, Tammy, I'm sure you might have a few suggestions of what there is to do on your, do maybe during some free time when you're in Fez. I'm sure a big uh, part of that would be exploring the souks. Yes, 
uh, many of us went back to the souks that night when we had a, a free evening. We just, we never had enough time there. I don't think you could ever have enough time there. It's just, they're so vast and there's so much to see and do. And they're just, yeah, that's what, that's what we did on our free time was back to the souk. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Well, the nice thing is that we've got a four full nights in Fez. So um, yeah. uh, the Women Explorers Tour, everybody will have a chance in the evenings pretty much are all, um, you know, time for you to either relax, get out and explore the city, see some more of the sites that maybe interest you or or the museums or again, the shopping in the souks is always a fun experience. Yeah. So then after our stay in Fez, uh, we will be traveling from Fez to Erfud. And uh, we're going to set out on our journey south through the Middle Atlas Mountains um, to a Berber country of high windswept plateaus and forests of giant oaks, corks, and cedar. Uh, we'll make a stop in Ifrain, which is a small town dubbed Africa's Little Switzerland, um, as you can probably see from the images there on your screen, uh, especially in the top left hand um, corner there, you've got a great shot uh, overview of the town of uh, Ifrain. Now this town was established by the French, which ruled uh, Morocco for many years. Um, it was established in 1928 as a hill station or a retreat from the summer heat um, It because it's at 5,500 foot altitude, um, its alpine climate and regular snowfall makes it a popular winter ski resort. Um, Ifrain's most known site is the large roughly carved stone atlas lion set in a tiny little park. And that's um, a big image there on the right hand side of your screen of that particular lion. The story goes it was carved by a German soldier during war, World War II uh, when Ifrain was actually used briefly as a prisoner of war camp. It commemorates the last of wild Barbary lions that roamed the Atlas Mountains. Um, yes, Barbary lions were once native to North America, including the Atlas Mountains, but are now extinct in the wild. And sadly, the last recorded wild Barbary lion met its demise in Morocco in 1942. A little bit of a sad story there. Um, and then continuing on to our food, we're gonna stop in the friendly Berber town um, of Azro. Whoops, I think I might've jumped forward there and my apologies. Um, Africa's, pardon me, not Africa's little sweat, in Azro, um, which is an actual handicraft center set among the steep volcanic hills, well known for its Barbary apes that live in the cedar forest. So we'll make sure you want to keep your eyes open um, as you may catch a glimpse of them as you travel through the cedar forests. Um, traveling through the Ziz Valley, uh, which is part of the huge oasis in Morocco. Um, you'll find it's dotted with date palm trees, and we're going to finally arrive at the small town of Urfud, which is on the edge of the Sahara. And we'll spend the night in a beautiful Casbah style um, hotel surrounded by the beautiful landscapes around us. And here are some images of Urfud and our actually our hotel that uh, we'll be staying in. You can see um, built in the typical uh, Moroccan Casbah style. And we'll be surrounded by the magical desert landscapes here. Uh, and we'll be there in time to catch um, an amazing Moroccan sunset. Morocco is famous for its sunsets and this is a, a great place uh, for viewing those sunsets. Then the next morning, we will be traveling from Erfud to the Marzuga Dunes. Uh, it's in a relaxing start to the day with a departure mid-morning, uh, stopping at the 8th century caravan town of Rosani, which is located in the uh, fairy tale oasis, which I mentioned. Um, that whole area is a um, very large oasis 
in amongst um, the mountains and uh, on the edge of the desert. It was built um, on a national historic site, actually, the town was, and it was recognized by Morocco's Ministry of Culture. And we'll visit the mausoleum of Moulay al-Sharif, which is the founder of the current ruling dynasty of Morocco. It's a beautiful sanctuary built to commemorate uh, one of Morocco's grand figures in history. And on the top left-hand side, there is a typical street in the town of Rassani, and top right is a view of the gardens inside the mausoleum. And on the bottom left is an exterior of the Moulay Al-Sharif Mausoleum, pardon me. And you can see the massive doors in the um, gate here into the mausoleum as well on the right bottom side of your screen. So you're gonna enjoy some time to explore um, the Erg, which is the sand sea of the Sahara, as you can see here, the mass of dunes. And uh, the Sahara Desert itself was once underwater as evidenced by the abundant fossils that can be found here. And we're all gonna have an opportunity to search for these relics as we explore the sand sea called the Erg. Um, and you'll... Um, you know, the, the, the fossils date back millions and millions of years, obviously. Um, it's been a long time and uh, the, the sea is now covered by the Sahara. And uh, you will stop at nomad desert villages along the route. And you can, um, we'll stop there and be able to enjoy some tea with some of the locals in the um, desert camps. The, the nomad desert camps, I should say. And obviously the tea is, is at the heart of everything in Morocco, uh, the mint tea. There's social events, business discussions, and even when haggling at the market, it's likely you'll find, you'll be offered um, the mint tea. In the Arab world, mint tea will typically only be served after a meal. However, Moroccan tea is served throughout the day and may be offered to guests at any time. It not only represents hospitality, it's also deeply rooted in their tradition. So it would be considered an insult if you were to refuse it. In traditional household, it was always the male head of the family that would serve the guests tea and, and may or may not prepare it in front of the guests. However, the pouring of the tea will be done in front of the guests. Uh, when the tea is when the tea is ready, the spout of the pot is placed close to the small, beautifully patterned or colored tea glasses, not cups. Um, as the host pours the tea, the teapot is lifted up quite high, as you can see here in the image on the left side of your screen, and brought back down again to the glasses. Um, the raising of the pot high and further away from the glass serves to add actually a thin foam or froth to the tea and it actually aerates it and it also allows the host a little moment of showmanship which they're very proud of the showmanship when they're doing their tea is is a big deal in morocco um, while the first glass is being enjoyed the host will top up the teapot again with more hot water mint and sugar uh, typically no more tea leaves are added at that point um, tradition dictates that three servings of tea are always offered. Um, Moroccans, like I said, take great pride in their green mint tea and the rituals of drinking and serving it. So it's considered impolite to refuse the tea and all three glasses should be drank. So they take their tea seriously in Morocco. Uh, Western tea etiquette can be left at the front door and collected on the way out. Our next stop is the magical village of Kamlia. Pardon me, Kam Kamlia. Uh, Kamlia is a unique village built on the traditional um, abode and straw located at the foot of the Erg Shebi dunes. The inhabitants here make this place unique as they are the descendants of the slaves that came originally from Sudan, Mali, and other African nations in a time uh, when slavery was a busy trade in Morocco. Not exactly a proud moment in their history. 
Uh, slavery was outlawed in Morocco in the 1920s. Um, sadly, in this region that you'll be visiting, um, it continued for another 10 years. Many of the slaves, when they were freed um, and left the fields, having nowhere to go and no resources, went to work in the mines and moved to the surrounding villages. The Nawa musicians perform at many events and have a pure form of African rhythmical music and dance. So during our lunch here um, of the local specialty, Medfuna or Berber pizza, you will have the opportunity to learn more about the Nawa music and its spiritual subterranean origins um, as we're treated to a private concert. Um, many of you might be asking the question at this time, what is a Berber pizza? Well, uh, Berber pizza were traditionally baked in the sands of the Sahara. Um, and it's locally joked as being the Berber pizza and is sliced into pieces to be shared among many. Uh, they use an ancient Saharan bread recipe, um, which incorporates flour, yeast, salt, olive oil and water. Uh, the dough is kneaded uh, to an elasticity and then rolled out into a round shape before being stretched over fillings, including like beef, eggs, nuts, onions, garlic, herbs, spices, spices like cumin, paprika, turmeric. It's very savory, ginger, parsley, and then it's baked. Um, I don't know, Jamie, did you get a chance to try any Berber pizza when you were in Morocco? I'm not sure if you were in the right area, but. Um... No, I didn't. We didn't get to that area, unfortunately. Next yeah. time I plan on hitting that area up though. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I have tried the Berber pizza and it, can, it, it, it comes in various forms. So they do have different fillings that you can, you know, customize it just like we do here with our pizzas, but uh, it is, uh, more like a calzone almost, I think, than a than a pizza. It's everything is baked inside that uh, layer of bread. Okay, so then after that, after our lunch and later in the afternoon, you're going to travel onto the dunes to your Berber desert camp for the night. Uh, we'll enjoy a camel ride at sunset. And there aren't many things in the world that are as awkward as climbing onto or off of a camel. But once you've made it up, really all your troubles seem as far away as the ground um, beneath you. We'll be winding between the towering Erg Sherby dunes as the sun sinks low on the horizon. Um, it's actually a very magical time. That's uh, the best one, either sunset or sunrise or are one of the best times to do your camel ride um, through, through the Sahara. And uh, both times are actually very magical. In the evening, the entire landscape lights up with a golden glow. Um, the ride will often stop. And so you can get off and go climb on one of the dunes to watch the sun set as it descends you know, below the horizon. It really is a very unique experience. After the camel ride, we will settle in for the night in our desert camp and uh, we'll have dinner followed by traditional Berber music around the campfire, take in the amazing views and the starry skies before retiring for the night in your most comfortable uh, Berber tent. And you can see some of the images here of a typical Berber um, tent or camp in uh, the Sahara. And Tammy, I know that um, you have spent a night in a desert camp, um, not necessarily in Morocco, but uh, would you like to share your experience about spending a night in a desert camp and perhaps maybe where it was? Well, this was in uh, Jordan in Wadi Rum and okay. I thought it would be something fun to do on the itinerary. It turned out to be the highlight of my trip. It was yeah. it was just amazing. I have never experienced a sunset like I saw there. It was it was it was just so peaceful and 
uh, and everybody on our tour, it was it was shocking to them how much they enjoyed just the peace and quiet out in the in this. Oh, it was just amazing. Yeah. Yeah. Stark comparison to the visiting the souks and the Medinas. I yes. mean, totally different experience. Um, very uh, uh, surreal experience, really. Yeah. Thanks, Tammy. Okay, and then the next day after spending our night in our desert camp, we're gonna wake up early in the morning to watch the sun rise over the dunes. Um, in the stillness of the morning, uh, it's a magical experience that really borders on transcendental. As I said, it's peaceful, it's quiet, it's um, it's very um, a very moving experience actually, very surreal experience. You'll notice that the camps here, they do have multiple tents that are strategically arranged around a campfire um, and a seating area is there also to enjoy socializing and music throughout the day and the night. Um, each of the tents has the same traditional designs. There's electricity, hot water, Wi-Fi. Yeah, desert, in the middle of the desert, you've got Wi-Fi. Um, and an ensuite bathroom uh, that's partitioned off so it is privacy from from the rest of the um the tent this is some images here of the sunrise in the sahara as you can see after breakfast we have to depart the desert camp and we're going to travel west past lush palm olive and uh almond groves um We'll travel past tiny Berber villages with magnificent kasbahs. We're going to start stop in um, another Berber town to admire and learn all about the ancient irrigation system, which is, of course, a very important system or was a very important system, as you can imagine, to those living in and around the desert. Um, and then we'll also stop at um, Kassar el Korbat to tour the museum of the way, of the oasis and the images here on your screen on the right bottom corner is um, a picture from inside the, the museum of the oasis. Um, it really gives you a good overview of the Berber culture and their history. And the bottom left hand corner is an image of the um, the irrigation, the ancient irrigation system, um, really a unique visit there. And you'll learn a lot about the ancient irrigation system and how they managed to devise this system to um, feed the oasis with water as well as supply them with uh, water for their, for their living needs. After lunch that day, we're going to stop at the oasis town of Tingyer, which is a bustling Berber town beneath the towering Atlas Mountains. You'll enjoy a walk through the Oasis Palmieri, um, which is the Palm Garden, and through the old um, Mela, which is the Jewish area. Um, its narrow streets there are lined with high adobe dwellings, and it has preserved for centuries the authentic atmosphere of southern Moroccan villages. You'll get drawn in by the mazes of alleyways and you'll meet art, artisanal weavers and bazaars. Um, and that's uh, the images there you can see on the left-hand side of your screen. And on the bottom right-hand screen is the walk in the uh, palm, walk through the palm garden. And uh, next is the Chodra Valley on the remote Eastern, pardon me, the remote eastern side of the High Atlas Mountains. Um, there we'll take a leisurely walk through the Tordra Gorge. As you can see here in the spectacular pictures of the uh, gorge, I'm sorry, I do have a duplicate picture up there of the, the palm trees too. Um, Surroundings of the where the Tadra River carved out a canyon into the pink cliff walls of the mountain. At the beginning of the gorge, um, between the canyons, you'll can find several vendors and restaurants selling everything from water and snacks to Berber rugs. Um, the path follows the icy river flowing through the gorge, um, passing by several casbahs that are built into the gorge. 
the Tord Tord Toad Rock, pardon me, Toad Rock Gorge is a flat, lush, breathtaking, and tranquil walk. In the afternoon, we're going to arrive at the hotel with a panoramic view of the Dades Valley, which is just on the edge, again, of the Sahara Desert with a great terrace, and it's a perfect place to enjoy dinner and watch another incredible Moroccan sunset. As you can see here, this is some of the images um, of the property that we will be staying in, in the um, Dades Valley. As you can see, it's got a beautiful pool area with a wonderful terrace. Day 10, um, this is in the morning, you're gonna set out to explore the Valley of the Roses. And uh, it's going to be an incredible day, um, spending day with the locals. And you'll meet the local women of the Valley and we're gonna join them for a mid-morning tea. And uh, the Datis Valley is really locally known as the Valley of Roses. And um, every year it really does burst into full bloom with thousands of soft pink fragrant roses. Um, it should be in full bloom around the time of our visit. For centuries, rose, roses have played an important part in sacred ceremonies, joyous Moroccan weddings, formal occasions and romantic offerings. Um, today, roses are harvested across Morocco and then turned into rose oil and water, which are um, used in their everyday life um, or sold across the world. To celebrate the wonderful harvest and the benefits of these blossoms, the Rose Festival in Morocco takes place each year in the Valley of Roses, uh, usually in May. So the roses, as I said, should be in glorious um, full bloom when we are there. Afterwards, we're going to have lunch, um, a traditional couscous lunch with a local family. Then we'll get to spend some more time uh, with the local women of the valley and uh, having hannas applied to your hands or your feet. Um, we'll have a chance to um, converse with the women, talk with them and learn about their daily life and cultures and uh, share what our daily life and cultures are like. Um, It'll be a great um, afternoon visiting with the local women. We'll be visited by metalwork artisans and enjoy a demonstration of hand making decorated jewelry um, before we return to our, our Hilltop Hotel for dinner and another relaxing evening. We will leave the Dades Valley behind after breakfast and begin our journey to Marrakesh. Um, en route, we're gonna visit Wazadat for a morning tour, including the 17th century Kasbah, Tariat. Um, a visit to the Kasbah of Tariat will, uh, you'll discover many architectural treasures here. And after passing through the main gate, you'll enter the Citadel's typical inner courtyard, um, which is a location where parties would have taken place once upon a time. And uh, looking up from the center of the Casbah Square, there's uh, you'll see the large towers with beautiful shapes and sculpted windows can be seen. Um, oh. It's been designed out of blocks of dry soil and straw and coated with a mixture of raw soil and lime. Um, you'll, you'll see the Casbah has been carefully painted with geometric designs. And there were approximately 300 rooms in this Casbah um, in total. In the city style reception room, the dining room and the private apartments are among uh, the few parts that are remaining and can be visited to this day. The interior walls are a sharp comparison to the exterior ones. They're richly decorated with painted stucco and decorative tiles on the walls with planks of cedar carved in um, into different shapes on the ceilings. You can see the inside of the buildings here on the left hand side of your screen on the top and the bottom versus the you know, typical um, 
stuccoed exterior, um, red clay exterior. From the Casbah's roof, you can see the, the oasis. You'll have great views of the oasis and the city of Wazajat as you continue ascending the stairs. You'll see the palm trees in the river valley below um, in breathtaking views. It really is an amazing um, little, um, cap, not little, Casbah um, to experience. It really is um, a wonderful sight to hold. Then we will, I'm sorry, I jumped ahead too fast, too quickly here. After we visit that, we'll continue to the ancient Casbah um, complex of Ai Ben Hadou, which is an impressive 11th century structure that has been declared um, a historical treasure by UNESCO. It really is a photographer's wonderland uh, this unique and medieval architecture, architecture, man, I'm, I'm, I do apologize. I'm having trouble speaking clearly tonight. Um, the unique and medieval architecture of I Ben Hadou made the Kassar a famous film set for Hollywood, where movies such as Lawrence of Arabia, um, The Gladiator, and The Mummy, and, and most recently Game of Thrones have been filmed. As you walk around the Kassar, you'll find locals selling their Moroccan handicrafts, again, rugs, jewelry, clothes, art, and, and much more. Then we will travel between Wazadat and Marrakesh. Um, the road is through a mountainous road with a semi-desert landscape that travels over the high Atlas Mountains called the Tizi and Tika Pass, which reaches an elevation of 7,400 feet. This lofty road takes you through some of the high Atlas Mountains' most beautiful sites. And you can watch the natural landscapes as their colors change constantly along the drive, gradually making you to the fertile countryside of the Hoos Plain and the pink city of Marrakesh. Tammy, I know that you recently traveled through the high Atlas Mountains. Um, can you share a bit of your experience and maybe a little bit about the landscape that you witnessed? Um, we'd love to hear it if you have something to add. It was, I wish I would have had my camera handy the whole time we drove. The scenery was ever changing and I missed so many good photo opportunities. It was just, it was incredible. It really was. Yeah, yeah. I know that on that, uh, that um, drive through, the the pass we will there's various um stops for photo ops that we'll mm -hmm. be making through there and yeah just to watch the the change of the landscape itself you know go from this high mountainous area to lush plains to desert it's ever changing morocco is a very diverse country when it comes to um its landscapes definitely um very very diverse in that manner And as we head into Marrakesh, you'll find Marrakesh is the fourth of Morocco's imperial cities that you're going to visit. Uh, so you will have visited all four um, of the imperial cities of Morocco when we arrive into Marrakesh. We will do a walking tour um, the next morning. Obviously, we'll arrive into Marrakesh later in the evening. We'll get checked into our hotel, um, have a dinner, and the rest of the evening is yours to get out and explore. There will be um, a lot of um, free time or leisure time, I guess, on the tour, especially, you know, some of the mornings as well as um, a lot of the evenings where you can get out and explore or rest. And the hotels that we'll be staying at or the Riyadhs that we'll be staying at um, all have magnificent pools and beautiful facilities wonderful landscape. So you'll have no shortage of things um, to do or choose from in the evenings. Anyway, back to Marrakesh. We're going to go on a walking tour here that will introduce you to this fascinating city where the past traditions and vibrant city life effortlessly converge. Uh, we'll visit the Bahia Palace and those um, images there on your screen of the top right. 
and uh, the left side of your screen um, with its impressive courtyard, um, beautiful gardens, and of course the, the former harem quarters. We'll see Ben Yusuf Madrasa, which is the bottom right, which is a uh, um, another historical educational institution, which is located right in the heart of Marrakesh. And that's a picture on the bottom right image of your screen. And I believe it is also the backdrop um, on Tammy's screen. Correct, Tammy? Correct me if I'm wrong. Well, you're muted. No, there this was that the... the Adarine. Oh, okay. Yes, 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 yes. That's right. Pardon me. I'm sorry. We will be getting to that as well. I think it's a little later down, but it looks so very similar to, to the picture on your screen. It's hard to keep them all straight for sure. Okay. So I apologize. I was wrong on that. Um, that is the Ben Yusuf Madrasa, which is in the image on the bottom right of your screen. And it was built in the 14th century and was once the largest religious school in North Africa and is now at UNESCO World Heritage Site. We'll get a chance to admire the Kutabia Mosque, which is the middle image on your screen, which is an architectural masterpiece symbolizing Marrakesh's grandeur um, with its towering minaret. You'll enjoy wandering through its serene gardens. I'll have a little bit of time there to enjoy the peaceful and serene gardens surrounding um, the um, Kutubiya Mosque. And in the afternoon, you'll enjoy some leisure time um, to shop for local crafts and the souks or wander through the Jama Al uh, square, which is a picture on the bottom left there, which is famous for its market stalls, food vendors, performers, snake charmers, acrobats, storytellers, musicians. Um, it really does uh, come to life and is um, definitely uh, worth a visit when you are in Marrakesh. It's uh, in the evening, you will also get together. We'll enjoy some traditional Moroccan dinner in a fabulous local restaurant. Um, the top right hand uh, picture of your screen. I'm gonna I'm gonna let Tammy um, chat to you about that top right hand picture of the screen. That's one of hers that she took when she was in Marrakesh this past June. Ah, uh, yes, that was just when we were heading into the Medina, I believe it was. Right, and uh, right. it was, and like you said, the the snake charmers, the performers. Oh, there's dancers. It's yeah. just, it's an incredible sight to see. It's just, it, they're everywhere ar around you. It's just absolutely incredible. Yes, it's, it's, they are quite the experience, I have to admit. There's all kinds yeah. of sights and sounds and scents. Um, but I love this picture that you took. It's, you know, love Marrakesh and mm -hmm. all done in different, um, I'm not sure if that's all spices or nuts or did you... Do you recall what we what we had there? Was, was it just a variety of all of that? It was, yeah. I think it was beans and a bunch of different things, yeah. It always amazes me at the artistry of how they display everything in these um, souks. It's, it's like an art form in itself, just the way that they are able to display their different wares, for sure. Well, thank you, Tammy. Now, this is another picture here on the top right that uh, Tammy took. And this is, uh, we'll experience this on your last full day in Morocco. You'll have the morning free um, to explore your own, maybe get down to the Sikhs uh, or the souks and check out the different wares that are available, um, whatever it is. And maybe, you know, it's time to explore what your interests are um, while we're free time in Morocco. And then we will visit, um, and, and we're going to go out for lunch, I should say. We're going to visit a um, lunch and have lunch at a women's cooperative, which is dedicated to the empowerment of disadvantaged women in the workplace. So it's a very, um, 
powerful uh, place to visit and a chance to chat with the ladies that, that are there, um, hear some of their stories, and enjoy a beautiful lunch uh, that they will be preparing for us. And after lunch, we will enjoy um, a leisurely tour among the rich variety of exotic plants set against the Berber signature cobalt blue of one of Marrakesh's most impressive Western landmarks, the Majorly Gardens, um, which is a botanical icon of the city and one of the most colorful gardens in Marrakesh. Oh, oh goodness me, uh, my mouse likes to to move a little bit quick. Sorry about that, folks. Um, Tammy, I know that your visit, you did get a chance to visit the gardens while you were there. Um, and um, share your thoughts on that. I know it's it's stunningly beautiful. The, cover, the colors, the variety of the plants, um, totally amazing. The pictures just don't do it justice. I understand that. I didn't get a chance myself to visit the gardens when I was in Marrakesh. And I know it's definitely on, on my bucket list of stops in, in Morocco. Yeah, it was, it's such a peaceful, tranquil setting. Um, it's, it, it's just lovely. It, everybody should stop to visit there because it, it is it's absolutely lovely. And they have a, um, a little area where they, cause they honor Yves Saint Laurent. Yes. There. Yes. And yes, he so, he actually owned the gardens yeah. at uh, prior to his um, death, and uh, yeah, so it is a, a huge um, commemoration there for him at Yves Saint Laurent, and the colors that that cobalt blue is just mm -hmm. so stunning, um, and again is one of the the colors of Morocco for sure. Yeah. But definitely uh, a beautiful, it's it's amazing how you can be in, in such a, a vibrant, busy um, city. And then right inside the old Medina is this beautiful garden that just, you escape from all the, the busyness of the cities surrounding you. It's, it's um, a beautiful, quiet, wonderful day to spend um, our last day in Morocco. We'll also have a wonderful farewell dinner this evening in one of the many fabulous restaurants that are available in Marrakesh, uh, where we can reminisce with our new friends that we've made um, about our Morocco adventure. So we're really hoping that you're able to join us. We'd love for you to join us on tour on our Women Explorers tour, Camels and Cows, our Cap Spas and Camels. Um, in April. And um, again, that is on our last day. We'll spend that last night in Morocco. The next day you'll be transferred to the airport uh, where you can um, catch your flight home or extend your stay in Morocco if you choose to do so. Um, our dates for our tour are April 22nd to May 5th, 2024. And just to recap, again, it is a 14-day tour. It does cover the one country, and we include 35 meals on this particular tour. Um, the currency, the local currency is the Durham. Um, Canadian passport holders do not require a visa, just your Canadian passport. Um, and a passport should be valid for six months beyond your return date home. And um, now we can move into questions. If anybody has any questions, um, please type them into our chat box and, and we are the Q&A box and we're happy to answer them. Um, we look forward to hearing from you and answering your questions. Julianne, yes, have we got uh, some questions? We do, oh, that was great. Definitely on my bucket list. Uh, we do have a question yes. from someone asking, uh, they joined late, um, but they're wondering about the roads and infrastructure in the Atlas Mountains and if they're okay after the earthquake. Yes, in the areas that we were traveling through, um, there is no disruption whatsoever. Um, in Fez, or, or pardon me, Marrakesh in the uh, Medina, obviously some of the damage is visible. Um, but it has been cleaned up and restructured. And uh, so you will you will notice some of the um, devastation that happened, um, but everything is um, on the go with no 
no disruptions for any of the places that our tour will be traveling to. And obviously, if there is any areas that that have um, experienced any any type of road blockage, which can happen in any mountain pass, um, our tour would be diverted around it. Safety is always number one on our tours and the safety of our passengers and uh, staff for sure are our number one priority. Perfect. That's a great question Thank to you. ask. Uh, another question is how many people are in per tent for the desert tents? Oh, that's a great question. It's however you booked. If you are a single person um, having your own room, then you will be in a tent uh, by yourself. If you are sharing a room with another of your women explorer travelers, um, by taking advantage of our uh, room share guarantee, where you can opt to choose um, to share a room with another traveler, and you are guaranteed um, the double rate, even if a, a single, another share is not available to join you, you're still guaranteed to pay that double rate, even though you will be sharing a room with no one. Um, but yeah, if you book double occupancy, then you've got two people in your room, two beds, two people. Um, if you've booked single occupancy, you will have um, yourself and the tent to yourself. That's a great question. Perfect. Um, and other than that, I don't see any other questions. So if anyone has any last um, last questions you'd like to ask before we end our presentation, we would be happy to answer them now. Uh, Karen says, good, this tour sounds great. Can I get a copy of the recording? So yes, Karen, uh, the recording will be sent out to you automatically tomorrow. And so you'll be able to watch it again, uh, miss or catch up on any parts you may have missed or send it to a friend if you, you know, have someone in mind that you'd like to travel with. Okay. And I oh, as, as, yeah. So, sorry, Leanne didn't mean to interrupt. No, that's okay. Um, as Leanne mentioned, uh, we'll send out a follow-up um, with the link to um, the, the, um, to the link to the tour with all the information. And you can always reach out to us for more information on this tour and any of our tours um, by visiting our website at westworldtours.com. Uh, you can email us uh, as well, reach out to us via email. You can follow us on Facebook. It's always a great place to go to see us, um, you know, when we launch some new tours um, or when our next uh, presentations will be happening. And, um, we always post pictures of our, while well, we're on tour. So you can see, um, you know, the pictures as we are traveling through these specific different destinations. So it's always fun to watch that as well. And uh, yeah, we hope you can join us next week on our tour to Antarctica. And uh, Leanne will be, um, I think I'll be facilitating that presentation. And I know Leanne is anxious to um, talk about it. She's uh, getting excited about her upcoming trip. So uh, hopefully you can join us for that. Tammy, thank you so much for joining us this evening and uh, sharing your a bit of your experiences while on your trip to Morocco. Absolutely.